Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. For as long as I can remember, I have always been fascinated with fish. It's just one of those things I've always found myself drawn to. And when I was a teenager, I decided I was going to try and get hold of as many different species as possible and breed them, of course. And this was the first killifish I ever kept and spawned. It's called Aphysomium gardneri, and I really do, do like them. I did go on to breed a couple other different varieties uh, later on, but uh, this is my first, and I always, like I said, I always liked it. It's a really lovely little fish, and I was fortunate enough recently to uh, acquire some, and I've been breeding them. And this is the way I used to breed them, way back, uh, like I said, when I was a teenager. Uh, but I did go to a meeting of our local aquarium society uh, before the plague, and in Montreal, they were breeding them a different way. They were using uh, well-planted aquariums. And what they would do is just put the fish in there, supply them with more than enough uh, cover space, and then, of course, some of the fry would survive. And that's how I ended up with these guys. This is, uh, well, basically all the plants and mulm that I took out of the tank when I was uh, getting it set up for the mop. And I just left it alone. And as you can see, the fry have come out. Uh, I think there's three of them currently. But then again, it does take a little while for the eggs to hatch. So there could be more coming uh, later on. So that's... I'm not going to like discard it. I'm going to raise these up. And spawning them with the planted tank worked. I do, I think, have now roughly about twice the number of killies I had when I first started. Uh, maybe even a little bit more than that but it is nowhere near enough to do more than just maintain the stock and i do want to have enough of these that i can actually uh, put them in some of my clients displays because they are truly lovely fish so and they do eat well and these guys are feeding on flakes so i'm going to switch over to doing it uh, at least one of the groups uh, this way for a little while just to see if i can ramp up my production a little bit so about a week and a half a little bit more ago I put that mop in there and it took a, about two days before it became uh, saturated enough with uh, water to actually look like a mop instead of just uh, stuff floating on the surface and then uh, this time here I think was well another five days later so we're talking about a week in and I started well I, I wanted to see if the male uh, was actually going to use it to spawn wasn't really expecting to find a whole lot of eggs. As it turns out, I think I found five. And I wanted to, uh, like I said, separate out the eggs, make sure uh, the eggs are more, like, more or less all viable. Uh, the thing with killifish eggs is, I mean, a lot of people would uh, go to a little extra care and they would um, add nothing blue and stuff like that. I don't want to do that. I want to um, make sure that these are robust fish. And so what I'm doing is I'm just looking for eggs. They're quite uh, hard. I mean, you can obviously easily squish them, but uh, you can, with your forefinger and your thumb, you can pull them out. And I was going to put them in the water. I'm going to change the water uh, daily and keep it in a fairly... There you go. There's the first one, I think. No, never mind. Uh, I'm going to change the water, make sure it's fresh. Uh, but I'm not going to add any methylene blue. And I'm going to see how well they develop and keep the water, of course, clean. And then as they hatch out, I am going to set up a small basin, like similar to the one you just saw there now. Actually, similar to this one right here. And I'll put some water in, a little bit of java moss, and I'm going to uh, raise them up. They don't really require much at all in the way of filtration. Now, ah, here's the first egg. Uh, they're actually reasonable in size. And as you saw, when they hatch out, uh, they're just a little bit smaller than a newly born guppy. So there you go. There's an egg. And I'm going to finish doing that. I want to, like I said, I want to keep, try to ramp up my uh, killifish production. Not to the point where I have hundreds of them. But I do want to have somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, probably about two or three dozen at least. And they don't, they're not long-lived fish. You're looking with this particular species about uh, two years. So I want to make sure I always have enough of them on, in, you know, in pro, in in the process of growing up and or uh, reproducing. So I'm going to keep this um, this way, to keep breeding them this way, and then I'm going to keep the other one the other way, and I'm going to try and see how they compare. If I find that uh, this is just way more uh, better than the other one, I will probably switch the other one over as well. 
But that probably would mean I would have to put in two mops in that tank because there are two males currently, and I've noticed one of the juveniles is also coming up as a male. So it's just important to you know make sure they have their own particular places. There's another egg. Uh, I'm going to stop this particular filming in a second, and we're going to move over to, uh, I think, four days later. So I want to make sure that they're uh, producing on a regular basis. Uh, it is the kind of thing that these killies do. They will spawn uh, almost every day. You can see there's two eggs right there. <laughs> uh, it was kind of, I went over and checked the camera. I wanted to make sure that that was showing up, but you can see them right there in the middle. Uh, this particular time, I only found two eggs. Uh, while I was actually looking through it. But you're gonna notice as I move uh, the mop around, there's, I think, about three eggs that I missed. But the nice thing about them is they take a fair length of time to hatch out, and it doesn't really matter if they spend, you know, two weeks in the mop, and then you finally find them. Uh, it is uh, not a big di issue at all. So what I've done with the original eggs is I have, like I said, changed the water on them daily, and one of them uh, went bad, which is, very good ratio and the rest are actually beginning to develop there's gonna be a the clip at the end here is going to show you uh, what they're going to look like uh, as you get to see the eye forming what i'm going to do is one i'm fairly certain that they're almost ready to hatch i'm going to take one of the eggs i'm going to put it under the microscope and i'm going to try and give you a really nice close-up look of it and that's actually really kind of cool i wish i had my old microscope from years ago uh, it would be much better uh, suited for this, but again, it's one of those things that unfortunately happens. You end up uh, losing track of things, and that particular one I gave to a friend and, and forgot about, and they moved away, and that was the end of that. So there you go. These are the first collection of eggs I got, and I'm going to focus in on one here. It's going to get a little shaky because I'm holding my uh, camera against the plastic container, and I'm going to try and zoom in. But you're going to see as we get in a little closer here, uh, the formation of an eye, which is actually, this is so amazing you can see this sort of thing. But I'm going to do a much better job of this. I am going to, uh, like I said, get it up on the microscope and have a much closer, clearer look. There we go. This is about as clear as it's going to get. So there you go. So this is my plan for moving forward with these killies. So let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if anybody's used mop spawning for killies before. And actually, let me know if anyone's used uh, the planted method, because I think it's relatively new in development for like, well, the last half a decade anyway. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.